Right, welcome to Toy Fishing, episode 13 of the World's Strongest Fishing Knot, where we're aiming to test every single fishing knot there is to find out exactly which is the strongest based on rigorous testing and a lot of line weight and line types. is possibly one of the most popular well-used knots there is mainly because it's quick and easy to tie and perfect for anyone starting up just before we get stuck in I've changed the format of the video slightly so please leave me feedback on this in the comments below the main change is that I've put the results tables to some music with the odd interruption for me instead of me just waffling through them and reading them up. And also, I've now put the testing parameters in the descriptions below, so check those out if you need to see them. I will talk over the testing examples with a little bit more explanation. So again, just comment below if you prefer this delivery. It will be most appreciated, thank you. All right, let's take a pause from this in and take a look at some testing examples right here on this machine. Right, uni to uni knot, mono to mono, 100 pound to 100 pound monofilament. Uh, the knot's just tucked away in there. You can see it between the two cylinders. And uh, let's see how good it is. Oh, the line's really stretching out now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not the best start. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Right, second test sample. Braid to monofilament, 100 pound braid to 100 pound monofilament. Knots in there again, two cylinders. Let's take a look how she does. I'm expecting the braid to break it as normal. Yep, yeah, and there you go. That's the braid done. Every time, man. Every time. All right, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Right, sample three, you need a uni knot braid to monofilament again. This is the one where I refer to it being utter garbage. It's where the line's running from the top to the bottom of the knot in a, almost a straight line, both on the braid and the monofilament, or on either one. It's complete and utter garbage, it really is. Um, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials showing it to tie it like this, and there's a lot of, um, a lot of Google images with the line running straight from the top to the bottom. Do not tie the knot like this. It has to overwrap. That outer line has to overwrap the inner wraps. It, it's imperative. I'm gonna show you here on this example, braids on the top, mono at the bottom. Tags typically coming out at 90 degrees, telltale signs of how you've done the knot up. So 90 degrees with the tags and the line running straight from the top to the bottom. Don't, just don't do it. <laughs> Let's take a look, it's, yeah. Normally what happens is the braid just, um, it just gives way. It just, you can see already it's starting to pull out. Oh, it, yeah, it's failed, it's done. You're done, I mean, what's that? Talking like mid thirties, it's, it's garbage. 100 pound line, you're only getting 30 pound line strength. If you're fishing a third of your line weight there, you would have been done. You would have lost a great fish uh, purely because you've done the knot incorrectly. Just be mindful. Um. Right, let's take a look at the test results, mono to mono. Let's see how we got on. Don't forget to pause if you need some extra time to focus on a certain result.
right, braids and monofilament, let's dig in. Let's see how the braid behave within the thong on these different line categories. Completely honest, I'm slightly disappointed in some of the performance that we've just looked at. I'm going to show you the overall results and see how these did. Let's take a look. Right, mono to mono. 60.06% and sneaking into top spot. Okay, that is a good result. Straight to the top here. I'm also going to remind you here of the terminal lock performance for the uni knot the overall result, 87.24%. So it's really evident how much more strength on exactly the same line types and categories, apart from the two additional line weight categories, we get this massive increase in strength. The fixed anchor point that the swivel provides actually gives the knot a massive 27% increase in strength. That is huge. Right, Bray tomorrow, let's take a look. 57.49% straight to the deep end. Well, let's just say that I'm not surprised. I'm going to explain exactly why this happens and why the uni knot on a line to line connection does so poorly in this category. Finally, Bray to Fluoro. Let's see if there's any improvement. 64.78%. So again, some repeatability here, straight in at fourth place. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of findings and then at why this knot behaves poorly on braid. Number one, so we did about 600 tests for this knot, of which 400 of them were on braid configurations, mainly mono and fluoro. On every single line configuration in these 400 braid variants, every single result was the same. The braid sample failed. The braid gave way here every single test. Right, number two, mono to mono, actually performed remarkably well. There was minimal movement in the knot and the knot was very stable. No hint of slipping whatsoever. Just be very mindful again of opting for the uni knot that is not overwrapped. That knot is beyond a joke. As I've showed you earlier in a few knot samples. Right, let's dig in and see why this knot reacts so badly to braid. Just to remind you here, these comments are reserved for line to line, uni to uni knot only. The knot behaves very differently on a fixed end like a hook or a swivel. The load distribution and forces are transferred completely differently. In our how to video for the uni to uni knot, on point nine, I hinted at the similarities of a uni knot and a granny knot, and how in fact these knots are in fact exactly the same except for the uni knot showing multiple wraps. So let's take a look at a single wrap uni knot. That's it. And in fact, that's also called a granny knot or an overhand knot. Right, let's tie a double wrap uni knot. Again, this is in fact a double overhand knot or a double granny knot. <laughs> there's such a thing. Okay, let's just pause here. If we look back at episode nine, stopper knots, well, we saw there how weak the overhand and the double overhand knot is. Click right up here if you've not seen that episode. 
Okay, let's carry on. So let's tie uni knot with three wraps and then four wraps and then five wraps. Okay, so I hope you guys are seeing what I'm seeing here. Take a look again. Did you see it? Okay, let me ask you this question. How sharp is a piece of braid line? If I said to any of you, hold out your hand, grab this line and let me drag this piece of braid through it really quickly. Forget about it. Your hands will be cut to the bone. It's like a hot knife through butter. Okay, so let's take a look again. Did you see it? Talk about overlapping lines and lines crossing. Right, hold my beer or my Coke. <laughs> if you can show me a knot with more lines intertwined, crisscrossing and congealed, well, not sure there is one. Not only that, just in case it's not crossing over enough, when you add more wraps and cinch the knot up, it actually unwinds from the left and then over wraps itself again. The whole knot is one big overlap cocoon. If anything, the very design of the knot allows the braid to maximize the amount of times it crosses over itself. Now, if we remember how sharp the braid line is, we have a knot that in fact is designed to cut itself up when the line moves. Very different in design from a non-overlapping blood knot or an Albright knot that we looked at or a uniformly intertwined surgeon's knot that we've tested. So this is where I give you guys homework. If you now watch the video again, along with the Uni Knot episode five and compare the results, you will see how the same knot on the same line behaves differently with remarkably different results. And by just adding a fixed point, we're gaining almost 30% of knot strength. The load distribution of the line running around the swivel is creating a vastly improved spread to the equal and opposite reacting forces around the eyelets of the swivel. Incredible, really. So look, I don't mean to be controversial here. I know how passionate many people are with this knot, but on a line-to-line -line configuration when dealing with braid, I would urge you to be cautious. I would also encourage you to maybe look at the design yourself and see how many times these lines cross over and under each other and overlap itself, giving the braid every opportunity to do what it's good at. Cut things up. I can only suggest you try a new knot as there are much better knots for line-to-line -line connections for braid line that will improve your knot performance remarkably. Right, I hope you all enjoyed that. It's almost a sad episode in a way, but again, I'm glad I've hopefully given you some insight into this knot that you may not have noticed before. And also, I hope you enjoyed seeing how this braid line that we all use so much behaves very differently in different knot configurations, even comparing the uni knot to the uni to uni knot. Tight lines and take care, and until next time, Stay tight and stay toy. Cheers guys and girls. See you later man. Cheers.